If there's a lesson for consumers, know your own flaws and recognize that the marketing people are ahead of you. They know about them already, so they're going to take advantage of you. Every year, Nobel laureates and young scientists from all over the world come together at Lindau to educate, inspire and connect. I'm Callum Williams and I'm here with uh, Daniel McFadden who's just given a talk to the Lindau conference on the science of pleasure. So when one opens uh, an introductory undergraduate textbook for economics, one of the first words one reads is, is utility. What in general have economists meant by utility? Because it's something that's often very poorly defined. Well utility uh, originally in the concept of Bentham was something physiological that led to the choices that people make. They, they were utility maximizers, pure and simple. Over the succeeding 100 years, uh, there was expansion and revision of those notions, but it's still the case that the core idea in economics was that when you look at whether economic markets are efficient, you look at uh, the effects of economic policy, consumers take care of themselves. You need to worry about monopolies and suppliers and externalities and uh, things like that, but the consumers are handling their end of getting efficient allocation. What we see is that consumers do pretty well for big decisions, but they fray at the edges uh, when they're dealing with uncertainty. They make some systematic errors, uh, which leads to a loss of efficient markets. You mentioned that people tend to do quite well when it comes to making the big decisions but do less well when it comes to making the more mundane ones. Could you perhaps give a concrete example of, of how that might work for, for an average person? What we see is that people making substantially odd choices when they are engaged in lotteries which have relatively small payoffs. There are studies uh, in some, of, some developing countries where academics can offer lotteries that are, that are maybe two years wages or something like that. What these studies have found is that when it's really serious, when you're playing a lottery that's a couple of years wages, you play close attention and it turns out that your behavior will often look very much like what the classical economic theory of maximization mm. would predict. One of the features we see is that when people make ordinary choices, they do things which seem to work for them and they, they do them repeatedly. You give them an unfamiliar choice, like buying a house, acquiring a mate, uh, deciding on a treatment for your medical condition. Those are unfamiliar decisions. It's ambiguous as to what the consequences are going to be. And their people seem to be less rational, less uh, consistent in how they proceed. And at least in the case of houses. People make mistakes and real estate agents know about that. The houses you're shown will be shown in a pattern which is designed, I think, to exploit creases in your behavior. Now, I think, I think some viewers may be wondering, well, surely uh, buying a house counts as one of those big decisions where you would expect consumers actually to behave rather rationally. So can you possibly just sort of square that circle? People are more rational when they face really big decisions, but even, even there, anomalies can occur, and a great deal of marketing research is devoted to discovering those <laughs> anomalies and finding out how to make money from them. So if, if there's a lesson for consumers, know your own flaws and recognize that the marketing people are ahead of you. They know about them already, so they're going to take advantage of you unless you're aware of your shortcomings. And if people do f act more rationally when they're buying big purchases compared to when they're making small ones, is that simply to do with the fact that they're, they're less bothered about losing money or is it to do with the fact that routine kind of dulls their mental capacities or what really explains this difference? Attention is a scarce resource and so what happens is that you pay attention to the, to the big ticket items and you let the small ones go in some automatic way. That doesn't mean that you aren't susceptible to some anomalies even on the big ticket items. What should be the main takeaways of your talk today? For people in general, I think the message is that you are susceptible to being taken advantage of because of the systematic anomalies in the way you make choices, which is part of, part of your brain wiring. The people who sell products know about this and they're already ahead of you, so keep your eyes 
appeal, watch out and be careful in your commercial transactions. And on that slightly ominous note, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much, Professor McFadden. Pleasure. Thank you.